Hey guys, it's me, Ronald Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather. And I want to first start off with Jackson Hole reporting 11 inches of new snow up there. I was forecasting 11 to 12, so a good call. Um, you can see it's still socked in on the uh, mid and upper parts of the mountain there in Jackson Hole. And I like Jackson Hole. I like it all the way through Christmas, and I'll show you that forecast um, and that pattern coming up. Um, let's go to uh, my intro here. Um, here are the few bullet points I'm watching. This is all part of what you see in Jackson Hole is part of this Arctic front that's diving south with some of the coldest air in years for parts of Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. And that's what's really going to drive the snow production in those areas all the way through um, probably the 22nd, 23rd. And then that goes east and it becomes this Great Lake, Great Lakes large storm system, blizzard-like conditions, strong winds, unfortunately, it's going to put the big ski areas of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine in the warm sector, and they're probably going to go from snow to rain back to snow, and that's really going to cut down on the accumulations. Then, I alluded to this yesterday, I think we're going to see a, a west coast atmospheric river set up 1227 or later, probably moderate intensity, um, but that appears to be uh, coming. Let me show you what the pattern is going to look like. Here's the jet on 1222. Um, so big, powerful jet reaching all the way into the northwest territories of Canada for that cold air. Big trough out to the east in the Great Lakes with that developing storm system out there. Uh, dirty flow across the west. You can see a little bit of jet energy blowing into the west coast. That'll probably push some waves of snow into the interior, although nothing terribly organized. Um, let me just show you what it looks like at the end of the month. So this is 1230. Powerful jet west to east. Pineapple connection. You're looking at a fire hose of moisture, Washington State, Oregon, California, with blow-off heavy precip and snow into the interior. Wait till you see the numbers for that period coming up. Let me take you back and show you the timing um, of all of this. All right, so this is going to be the future radar and satellite here. Um, so here is Thursday morning at 6, snow moving through Colorado with the Arctic front. A little dirty flow on the west coast clipping the Sierra. There's Saturday morning at 6. A little more moisture sliding through Idaho and the Tetons. There's Sunday. There's Monday morning at 6. There's Monday morning at 11 p.m. Still waiting on the atmospheric river hook up there, 1227 and later. I'll run that out one more time so you can kind of see it. There's Thursday morning at 6. Snow and very cold air in Colorado. Here comes the next dirty uh, flow. There's Saturday, 1224. Here's Christmas Day in the morning. Some snow in the Tetons, and then it moves through on the 26th in Colorado. And then everybody's kind of quiet on the 11th, except for the Pacific Northwest. So that is um, the flow pattern. Let me show you what I'm thinking as far as totals go. And I'll do this in three different phases for the West. So all of today through the 23rd, um, I think you're looking at some of the best new snow, Pacific Northwest, parts of the Tetons, parts of the... Uh, uh, the Wasatch, and of course in Colorado with the Arctic front sliding through. Now after that slides through, here's the 24th through the 26th. It's a little more quiet, kind of a northwest flow coming out of the Pacific Northwest, BC, Banff looking good, and there's still some leftover snow in the central to northern mountains of Colorado, uh, 24th through the 26th. Here's the final period. Now this is going to be a big one if this uh, AR sets up, we're looking at one to two feet out of the Pacific Northwest down into the Sierra, one to two feet for the Tetons, the Wasatch, and probably four to 12 for most of Colorado. And a lot of that's blow off precip, just benefiting from that atmospheric river. Idaho looking good as well, uh, and a nice rich feed of moisture 27 through the 30th. So, what about the Northeast? Well, again, uh, with the mixed precip, that's going to cut down on totals. I think Maine probably stands the best chance of getting over six inches with some additional wraparound, and it's going to be a little bit colder up in Maine um, with that big low sliding through. And there's going to be some very strong winds, 50, 60, 70 mile per hour at the height of the storm on the 23rd. And then we're going to have some pretty good lake effect, 24, 25. So if you're near the lakes, you'll benefit from that. So there you go, guys. Always appreciate you tuning in here. Until the next video, take care.